Hey mom, it's Audrey. I just wanted to let you know, get the canning supplies ready because we're gonna finally have enough tomatoes to make spaghetti sauce. All right, we'll talk to you later. Love you, bye. Okay, so I have to tell you why I am so excited that I finally get to make spaghetti sauce this year. So about six years ago, my mom's dad, who I called Pops, passed away. And he is the one who I give all the credit to when it comes to all my knowledge I have about chickens and gardening and canning. He always had chickens and a huge, beautiful garden. And every year we would pick loads of tomatoes and make huge batches of the best spaghetti sauce I've ever had. And so ever since then, my mom and I have wanted to carry on that tradition, not only for the end product, but for the great memories it would bring back. But through all the gardening season since then, we have not had a crop of tomatoes big enough to make a batch of spaghetti sauce. So let me take you through the journey of what was once a tomato growing heartbreak to what is now a tomato growing success. But first, if you're new here, I'm Audrey and I help passion driven people trailblaze their way to a life filled with happiness, plants, and chickens. It might be hard to imagine now, but there used to be this huge, beautiful willow tree behind me and it shaded my entire garden and it actually got planted on its own. I remember walking out into my garden one day and seeing this tree about two feet tall. And at first I considered pulling it out, but it was in the perfect spot to provide some great shade for my garden. So I decided to leave it. But little did I know that in two short years, that tree would be the destruction of my garden. That tree quickly grew and it provided a lot of shade for the garden. But at that time, none of the boxes behind me were there. I had a couple rows of tomatoes about right where I'm standing, two garden boxes, and then a few tractor tires as planters around the edge. And so prior to planting, I had all of my tomatoes ready. And when planting day finally arrived, I walked out into the garden to start digging the holes and I couldn't even get the shovel through the soil. At first, I thought it just must be that the soil's too hard. So I went over to my raised garden beds at the time, which were filled with fluffy dirt, and I couldn't get a shovel through that soil either. The roots of the willow tree had completely spread throughout my entire garden up into my planters, completely ruining my entire garden. You couldn't get a shovel through the soil anywhere. It was just masses of roots. So that entire garden season was ruined. But on the bright side, it led to my garden makeover, which is the garden I have here. We knocked down the tree, cleared out everything and started from scratch. And then in this area here, we rotor tilled it and made long rows so I could have lots of space for growing tomatoes. So in the rows behind me, I packed two full rows of tomatoes and then anxiously awaited for harvest time, never expecting that it would be three years later. That tomato crop completely failed. I learned the hard way that more is not always better. I had overcrowded my tomatoes and so they suffered from disease and I never harvested any tomatoes. So the following year, I spaced out my tomatoes to what I thought was enough but it wasn't, and I never harvested anywhere near the amount of tomatoes I needed to make sauce. So since then, I dove deep into researching how to grow tomatoes successfully because I was not about to have one more failed crop. And so here are a few of the things I did differently this year. I only did one row of tomatoes so that there's plenty of airflow from both sides of the tomato plant. I also spaced each plant five feet apart. I also made the choice to plant almost entirely all hybrid varieties because they're more disease resistant and heat tolerant, but I did plant a few heirlooms just because they taste so good. I've also consistently been watering my tomatoes deeply and slowly to encourage the best root structure. And then I also come out daily and tie up my tomatoes to make sure that all the branches are fully supported. And now after many failed crops, I finally will harvest enough tomatoes for my mom and I to make spaghetti sauce. It was seven summers ago when I last made spaghetti sauce with pops. And this summer, for the first time since, I'll be reminded of some of my most favorite memories of him and I in the kitchen as my mom and I get to share our time together canning spaghetti sauce and looking back over great memories. And one other quick tip I forgot to mention about growing tomatoes is that they have to be planted as transplants. I'm sure you've seen those plants that pop up every year from tomatoes that have fallen on the ground last year, but you just can't put seeds in the ground and expect them to grow that great. So you have to plant them as transplants. And in order for your plants to grow into healthy and thriving tomato plants, it's really important to give them the best start possible, which is much easier than you'd think. Just join me in my video right here where I share my five best tips for successful transplanting.